In this video, we're going to take a look at the replication of MetaPrompt, a simple self-improving language agent by Noah Goodman. We will actually take a look at two different replications, one of them which relies on LangChain's implementation. When I was going over this implementation, I realized that it only uses the OpenAI, which means it's going to use Text DaVinci 003. So I created a vanilla version without using LangChain using the exact same prompt, works pretty much the same. And I also attempted to create one from scratch myself with a different prompt. This one uses a single loop. This one uses two loops, a loop within a loop. They both work pretty well. We're going to demo it now here in a sec. Feel free to use the LangChain implementation as well. Probably requires less line of code. The link will be in the description. But let's take a quick look at what happens. So you give the model, the system, some instructions, and then you interact with it. First, you describe the task, then you get a response, then you give feedback. Response and feedback continues until the loop is done or the user is satisfied. <clears throat> then it goes to another language model, another separate model, which is going to critique and revise these instructions and then create a new system message to repeat this loop. So this would be this would be this would make good use for creating prompts for something that you're having difficulty with, for example. Let's just see it in action. I have created a Koai AI Academy at echohive.live. You can go there and search all the videos that I have created. You can search for LangChain, OpenAI, whatever you like, and you can find the videos that you need quickly. There's also download links to the code files. You can also look at the descriptions as well. Just check it out. The link will be in the description. I'm going to run the script in a debug mode so we can see line by line execution. So this way we understand how the code works. Also, at the same time, understanding how the overall system works. We're going to be using the MetaPrompt replication. The main.py file is my replication, main underscore two. These files will be available for my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. So to start the debugger, I'm going to press F5, or you could actually start it from here as well. So I came to the end of the code because this is where we are actually taking multi-user inputs. This is different than taking single-line single inputs. This one takes multi-line inputs. This works well because I'm just going to copy this, which is this first part, as I've said, content is this part of the meta prompt article. I just copied that. And in the prompt, I said respond with a summary of the content. So I'm just going to copy this, bring it into Visual Studio Code, and to paste it into Terminal, you can use the right click of the mouse and then see everything will be printed and then i have to actually enable multi-line input you have to have some kind of term some kind of word to actually get that going i'm going to say done done is our keyword and i press enter done will not be included in the our multi-line input anyway so then we actually come to the top of our code and we are going to our failed phrase which is we can actually enter in our input to stop the loop or that the task succeeded. So we, we turn them into a dictionary. Currently the instructions for the model, which is going to be this uh, system message is none. Then we go and we enter the meta max iters a loop, which is the loop as presented here. It's the larger loop. So we have entered the larger loop. And in here, we're just going to print the episode number. This we are in the first of five large meta episodes. And then when I ex went over to this line we, i can actually come back to messages and see that the system message is actually none because we, when you're executing your code line by line with the visual studio code debugger you can actually see your variables by hovering over them and as they are generated in real time or at the left right here variables okay so now we're going to continue and we're going to append that to our append to our messages the user task which we had created so now if we were to scroll over our messages, we see that our user content had been added. It's been refracted. It's been shortened, but nevertheless, it's all there. And the done that we have typed is not there. That's good. Then we're going to move, move on and get a response from GPT-4. We are using GPT-4 as even in the article, the person describes that GPT-4 was just so much better. But you can try it with GPT-3.5 as well, if you like. We have gotten the assistance response, which is right here. It's a summary of the content we have given it. And then we're just going to print that right here. So now that we've seen it, we can actually enter the smaller loop where in which we are going to go back and forth, give it providing feedback. 
this currently is consisting of three. You can adjust these. And then we're going to be greeted by enter user feedback. When finished, enter done. And now we can enter our feedback. My feedback will be return all the important keywords as well at the top in a separate paragraph. And then I'm going to press enter and I'm going to go to back to the user input again, since we're executing line by line, enter done. That's not going to accept it because it has to be lower case. Here we go. That's good. Now we are appending that message as the user feedback, as you see, return all the important. So this is, we are keeping track of all our interactions. Now we're going to get another response. And then we append that to the assistance response, such as this. As you see, it had created some new keywords and it had actually, we printed the assistance response as all the keywords in a separate paragraph plus the summary. Now we are entered the second feedback portion. Now I'm going to say return the keywords and the summary as a JSON object. And then just say down here. Now we have appended that. As you see, our system message is still none. So we have no original instructions to the model yet. And now we're going to get another. Oh, here we go. We have gotten the assistance response keyword. It's, it's, so this whole thing is in a JSON object like format. Now we can enter another feedback. I have said it to add, also add important dates, events, and names as another key to the JSON object. So I'm just providing more and more feedback as I'm going along. Now we're going to get another response. Here we go. We get another response. Now we have a JSON object consisting of keyword keys with all the keys, summary, plus the important dates and event names. Now we are actually going to get out of this loop, I believe, because we have done this three times. Now we are actually going into the meta loop and we are actually hitting the meta prompt. You can read it. And we are going to inject the chat history and we are going to have the model reflect on these and provide a new instructions, which we're going to call the meta response. As you see, if we look at the chat history, all our chat history has been inserted into this prompt dynamically. And then we are moving on and getting a new response. This one is to get a system instruction, actually. We have gotten a feedback. Critique is that the system performed well overall, providing accurate summaries, responding correctly to users' requests of returning keywords, format response to the JSON object. However, when user asks for important dates, events, they still only return names, omitting other relevant information. So then it creates an instruction. So it, it returns a critique. And then after the critique, it returns an insert instructions. When the user asks for a summary or keywords, make sure to provide a concise, accurate response. If the user requests additional information, such as important dates, events, go on. So this is going to be now our new instructions. And we are actually going to write it to a file just like this. And then we continue starting the second episode with the same instructions. But this time, our user instructions, sorry, the a system message has been updated. As you see, the system message now includes when the user asks. So this has been included in the system message. So it's an iterative process. It's a self-improving process. Now we can play it uh, continuously, but I'm just going to go on talking about the other related stuff as well. I just want to mention I have created a Co-Hive AI Academy. I have created over 100 videos about AI coding, building AI-powered apps. It's echohive.live. You can search in real time and find whatever you need and start watching. There are also the code links to Patreon code downloads. Take a look at this. So we have gone over the meta prompt code. I'll quickly scroll over it so you can review it. The code will be available for Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. After we take a look at this, then we're going to take a look at the one that I had attempted to create just with the general ideas. This one works pretty much the same, right? It takes a system prior message, which is empty. Then we run it and then we get user instructions. In this case, I guess I should anyway. I've just changed this user instructions to be multi-line as well. So we get user instructions. Then we get into a loop. We append that as the user message. We print the current user message. Originally it's gonna be empty. Then we write that system message to a text file. Then we get a response and we print the assistance response. And then we append it to our ongoing chat. And then we get another user feedback. 
and using that user feedback within this prompt, we are defining a system message for this upcoming prompt. Okay, this is not used in our instruction creating, but only to critique the current system message. And I say, adjust the system message to convey universal relevant guidance for the assortment of instructions. It takes in user instructions, assistance response, user feedback, and the prior system message. So this is, this actually tries to update the system message every time. And then we get the messages as a system message and enhancement request. And then we continue. Oh, sorry. And then we make the call to get a system response. And then we update the system message prior with that response. And we update the system message with that response. So we're this is to receive a new and updated system response. So let's just run this. We're not going to go line by line on this. Let's try the exact same thing, the passage from the meta prompt article and the response with a summary of the content. Copy paste it here with the right click of the mouse and say done with lower letters current system message is none we get a response which is a summary then we are requesting user feedback i said add keywords in the beginning import and important dates events names events and other information in the end all as separate paragraphs then we have to say done but when we do that, as you see, we get the current system message which says immerse yourself in the controlling domain of self-improving systems. So it's trying to create the, it's not, it didn't really return a very good system message. Sometimes it does, sometimes not. I have to check if I was using GPT 3.4. So I did it twice and it keeps appending the new system messages here, but it didn't really do as well as the meta prompt. Let me just check if you were using GPT 3.4, GPT 4, yeah. Even then, but maybe you can improve this if you like. There, it has definitely some good ideas in it. But the uh, meta prompt implementation works so much better. I'll just scroll over both code right now. This is the main.py, my attempted implementation. Feel free to try to improve it like this. And this is the meta prompt, original meta prompt implementation in vanilla Python code using OpenAI. The only requirements for this is just the term color to be able to print colorful stuff in the terminal and open AI. I'll create that file and share this with my Patreon supporters. And please, like I said, check out the echohive.live. It just makes it convenient to find the content you're looking for out of all the content that I had created. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this. See you in the next one.